Hey guys and welcome to another episode of tutorial with me Joseph Evans, author of The Secret Sequence Books and The Phoenix Prophecy, The Ember Effect, Soulbound, The Secret of Rain, The Last Goodbye and Glitch Girl. If you find my tutorials helpful and you'd like me to continue making them, please take a quick moment to check out my Patreon page and see the different ways that you can support me. If you do decide to support me, you can get a range of rewards as a thank you from me, including early access to these tutorials, voting on what tutorials I make, episode goodie bags, shout outs for you and your stories, and even personal help from me. You can also get certain rewards by becoming a member of my channel. All you need to do is click the join button underneath this video, or click the first link in the description of the video. Okay guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to add sounds and music to your stories and how you can fade the volume of those over different durations. Now, I do have another tutorial on sounds and music, but I made it three years ago when the only art style available was classic. Strangely enough, not a lot has changed since then regarding sounds and music, but I think it's about time that I did an updated video. I also only showed you how to start and stop in that video, and I never went into volume control. So, first things first, how do you add a sound effect? Well, I've got an example scene here, where I have two characters, Tyler and Josh, and playing as Tyler, you can choose to punch Josh if you wish. By default, this punch animation is silent, but we can change this by adding in a sound effect. If I go down to the sound library by clicking this little arrow by the word sounds in this right hand panel of the portal, I can browse through all of the sound effects and pieces of music that are available. Because there's so many, it's often difficult to find what you're looking for just by scrolling through. It's often much better to do a search using this filter sounds bar at the top of the library. If I do a search for punch, uh, nothing suitable comes up, but how about I do a search for thwack? There we go, thwack. Let's preview that with the play button next to it. Yeah. Great, that is exactly the kind of sound I'm looking for. To add this into my story, I need to create a blank line before the line where the punch happens, so right here. Then I need to write the word sound in all lowercase letters, and then the file name, which is simply thwack. Let's see if this works. Brilliant. Okay, how about music? I've got another example where I have a guy and a girl dancing in a club. But by default, this is again completely silent. Now I'm going to go over to the sounds library and I'm going to do a search for a club to see if we can find any club music. And as you can see, there is a decent selection here. I think I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to choose that one. And by the way, guys, if you ever need to turn off a preview, you can click this icon of a speaker and it will mute the volume of the preview. Okay, so to add that in there, instead of writing sound, let's go to the beginning of this scene. Uh, I'm just going to write the word music again in all lowercase letters. And then instead of typing out the file name, I can actually just click the file name, which does save a little bit of time. Now you'll notice here that the word music appears twice. This is not a typo and should not be corrected. The word music is actually a part of the file name of a lot of the music tracks so that you can differentiate between music and sound effects in this library. So this does need to be in there for it to work. Let's see what this scene looks like now. much better. And again, if you need to mute the audio of the web previewer, just click this audio icon right underneath it and it will put a strike through it and mute the sound. Be aware though, guys, that when you mute the sound for yourself, that is not muting it for your readers. And music will actually infinitely loop until you write a command that turns it off in your script. Let's just make some room so I can show you here. And then the command for turning that music off for your readers is simply music off. Now, how about I let my characters continue dancing for maybe half a second after the music cuts out. So pause for 0.5 and then I'll have them both performing the idle animation. So guy starts, 
idle and girl stats idle and then the girl can say what happened to the music and let's have her perform the talk shrug animation okay let's unmute our web previewer and we'll see if this works Okay, great. The only thing that's wrong here is the speech bubble is pointing to the wrong character. So let's just correct that quickly. Cool. By the way, if you ever need to turn a sound effect off, you can also use the command sound off. But it's unlikely you're ever going to want to use this as most sound effects are pretty short. Now, how about using music and sound effects at the same time? Let's delete this whole part that I just created where the music gets turned off. And instead, let's say that we want the guy's phone to ring while he's dancing. If we go over to the audio library and do a search for phone, you can see there's quite a few different phone sound effects we can use. Let's unmute this preview and try simply phone ring. Okay, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's add that in. So sound, and then I can just tap the file name. So phone ring. And then I'm going to want to let that ring for about one second before he picks up. So let's just pause the action for one second. Pause for one. And then I'm going to have the guy perform the text phone neutral loop animation because that makes it look like he's just simply tapping his phone screen as if he's maybe pressing a button to answer the call and then let's have him say hello in all capital letters to make it seem like he's shocked in and uh, yeah I'm in the club and of course we have to make him perform the talk phone loop animation let's let's use the angry one maybe because he's annoyed at being disturbed on his night out let's see what this looks like Okay, on to volume control. Let's say that we want the volume of this club music to be lower. It is pretty loud and it might be annoying to the reader if they have to spend too much time in this scene. To immediately set the volume of all music to half of what it usually is, we can go to the beginning of the scene and write volume, then music, and 50, a space, and then zero. What this means is it sets the volume of the music to 50% in a duration of zero seconds, aka instantly. We can use this second parameter to fade music in or out. Let's say we want to fade the music out at the end of this scene so that we can transition nicely to another scene. I need to write volume music zero because we want it to end up at completely silent. And then the number of milliseconds that we want the fade to last. So if we want it to last three seconds, then we need to write 3000. Let's combine that with a visual fade over three seconds as well. So at transition, fade out black three. And then I think I'm gonna cut to a black screen with just a narrator say in the following morning. So that would be int black night and then narrator the following morning okay let's see how this all looks great that is a nice smooth transition now, how about we have the next scene be an establishing shot of some traffic to indicate that the MC is going to be late for work. I can use ext NYC city street day. I'm going to cut to zone two. And I'm going to do a search for traffic in the sound library to see if we can find any traffic sound effects. So ambient traffic, let's have a listen.
Yeah, that's just what I'm looking for. But if I add this in as a sound, it will only play once and then stop abruptly as soon as the sound effect is finished. Because this kind of background ambient effect is perfect for looping, I'd be better off using the music command instead of the sound command, even though this is not technically music. So I just write music and then click ambient traffic. And then to fade that in, I can write volume music. Let's say you want that to be 80%. And then I think I'll say 5,000 milliseconds, which will fade it in from silent because we silenced it in the previous scene up to 80% over the course of five seconds. And I'll do a, a visual transition back in as well over the course of maybe three seconds. So at transition fade in black three. Okay, let's take a look. Okay guys, that is how you add sounds and music to your stories and control the volume levels. The only other thing I want to say before I go is that it is good practice to add the music off command to the beginning of all of your scenes where you don't want music playing because you can sometimes forget that you've added music to a previous scene. And like I said earlier, music does run infinitely from scene to scene unless you manually stop it. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the helpful tutorials that I've got coming up. And if you'd like to support me and get some exciting rewards, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash author Joseph Evans, or click the join button underneath this video. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure to comment them down below. And if you know the answer to anyone else's questions in the comments, it would be great if you could give them a quick answer to help them out. Thank you so much for watching guys, good luck adding sounds and music to your own stories and I will see you all in my next video.